Hey everyone, welcome back. Welcome back to the channel. My name's Grant and I'm a freelance photographer and graphic designer based in Queensland, Australia. And in today's video, I'm gonna go over why I ordered the Panasonic Lumix G85 in 2022, late 2022 for 2023, okay? So I've got a whole heap of stuff why I got that camera and a few reasons why and a whole swagger of other points to go over, right? So let's roll that intro and let's get into it. Hey everyone, welcome back. So yeah, the G85 in 2022, let's just say 2023, it's November 2022, why I got a G85 in 2023. Well ordered one in, okay? Um, I thought it would be good to make this video considering, um, you know, the Sony a7R5, the Canon 60, what is it? No, R6 Mark II, the uh, Fuji X-T5, all these new release cameras that are just coming out and I went and ordered essentially a six-year-old camera, yeah, about six-year-old camera and why I got a six-year-old camera instead of maybe going something a little bit new. Yes, budget had a lot to do with it, um, but why I went, you know, an older camera compared to sort of a more modern camera, in particular, you know, with all these new releases and stuff like that. So I thought it'd be a good video to make currently, you know, see, you know, in the, in the camera climate we're currently in, okay? So let's go over the first group why I got the G85. Okay, so, you know, the first group is, is that I needed another camera. I need another camera for this YouTube channel. I needed another camera for my professional work. Um, and I also needed another camera for my um, personal work too. In particular, my street photography and also a camera to you know carry around and document the family's journeys, okay? So that's why I got the G85, right? Um, one big reason was is that, you know, the GH5 Mark II that I film on all the time for my YouTube stuff, that is still an integral part of my professional work, okay? And I'm sick of tearing that down and then putting it back up again. Tearing it down, putting it back up again. So today I had a gig, I had to strip everything down last night and then to make this video today, I had to put it all back up again. I want to be able to leave the GH5 Mark II as my main YouTube camera. I really love um, that camera for this sort of content creation. It's working out a treat. So having that set up on a permanent tripod all the time is going to speed up my workflow in all aspects, in the YouTube, in the personal, uh, sorry, professional work and in my personal work too, okay? So having another body for that. And then, you know, if you've seen my videos before, you know I talk a lot about the Lumix G9. And when I want to make B-roll and take some photos of this camera, the lenses, um, you know, you know, content around the, the camera itself, taking photos and making content around the camera itself, I have to then take off the GH5 Mark II and do all that sort of stuff. Having another camera in this YouTube ecosystem is gonna be super handy for me to make the thumbnails, to make the B-roll and stuff like that, right? So instead of tearing things down and putting it back up again, I'm gonna have a third camera that can just instantly make content, create, uh, make content for this YouTube channel with, okay? Um, the other thing, the GH5 is gonna stay there all the time. I need then a second body to take to me, to take on professional gigs with as a backup camera, as a camera to do behind the scenes, things like that, right? So the G85 uh, is a smaller camera and that's what I was going for. I could have got another Lumix G9 or another GH5 but I decided I wanted something a little bit smaller and a little bit lighter because that then ticks the next two boxes, okay? So we've covered YouTube, we've covered my professional work, let's get into my personal stuff. Okay, another reason I got the G85 um, was I want a dedicated camera for my street photography, okay? And this camera comes in a kit form and we're gonna go over the lenses that it comes with, that's the big bargain of the century, right? Um, but having a dedicated camera for street photography, smaller and lighter than the G9 with the Leica lenses, smaller and lighter than the GH5 Mark II, even though that's quite small, um, but even smaller for street photography. And then also having a camera that can follow um, around 
um, family with and document all their journeys together and stuff like that, right? So a lighter camera that doesn't stick out as much, is a little bit more inconspicuous, is gonna be super handy. Um, I know, you know, in theory, the G9 is not a massive, massive camera, but still, it's got a bit of weight to it, especially with the Leica lenses. The other reason is, is that I'm going back to uni next year to finish off my Bachelor of Design, and having a nice, light, cheaper style camera to, to lug around to university is going to be a whole heap easier than taking the more expensive G9 Leica lenses, GH5. Smaller camera that can throw in the bag, and do what I need to do um, at uni with it as well, right? So um, it's ticking multiple boxes just as a camera itself. But let's get into the kits, the kit and the lenses too, okay? G85 kit is still brand new, okay? They must be shipping them out cheap or something like that to just get rid of them, okay? So G85 with the Lumix 12 to 60 kit lens, variable aperture lens, and a bonus 25mm uh, f1.7 lens. It's not the Leica f1.4, it's the Panasonic f1.7 lens. Those three items and a battery, of course, charger, all that sort of stuff, trap, strap and everything, brand new in the box, 1,099 Australian dollars, okay? So it's like $500 off at the moment. So they must be just trying to get rid of them to make way for you know all the new stuff. So it's a great, bargain to be had just there, okay? It keeps me in budget, keeps the cash flow moving, you know, I'm not going, you know, spending a lot of money um, and it's serving multiple purposes. And that's where the lenses come into it too. I need a more permanent lens on the GH5 Mark II for YouTube. Currently, I'm filming most of the time with the 12mm uh, f1.4. I do have the 12 to 60 Leica lens as well that I sometimes film with. But having a lens there on the camera at all times, that variable aperture lens is gonna, in this setting, is gonna be absolutely fine. There's no worries there. Having a permanent lens on the GH5 Mark II is gonna be great. Permanent setup all the time for this YouTube content creation stuff. Then that frees up that 12 mil for my professional work and my personal work too. So that's a really, really good thing. Having a permanent lens there all the time is gonna be great. And then, you know, the bonus lens of the 25mm, uh, the Nifty 50, I guess you could say, putting that on the uh, G85 for my street photography and spending just 12 months with that camera and that focal length and just discovering street photography and really working on my street photography uh, career with that little kit, um, that's a big goal of mine and that's what I want to focus on too, right? Uh, the other thing, light combo, 25mm, follow the family around and stuff like that. It's a great, you know, just shoulder cam to document their journeys and stuff like that. Instead of lugging around the big G9 with the Leica lenses or the GH5 with the Leica lenses. And this is expensive stuff too, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I don't want to be lugging this around anywhere I don't have to. So the G85, it's lighter, it's cheaper. It doesn't matter if it goes missing essentially. It doesn't matter if it gets broken. It's not as a big risk of investment than you know, these two cameras here, right? So that's another reason I got it, is the kit and the lenses. I needed more lenses as well. That's gonna tick multiple boxes as well. Let's get into my last group of points and then we'll wrap this bad boy up. Okay, so, um, you know, I was tempted maybe to try out maybe a Sony A6600 with the Tamron 17 to 70 f2.8. Um, I was thinking about bringing that into my workflow as a potential third camera, but nah, stick with what I know, stick with the Micro Four Thirds, stick with Panasonic. I'm heavily invested in that Micro Four Thirds ecosystem. All the lenses fit all the cameras. Um, so it just made sense to do that. I don't wanna to have to learn a whole new system again just for one camera when I know the Lumix Panasonic system like the back of my hand, okay? So it made sense just to stick with some sort of Panasonic camera. And then when the G85 presented itself brand new in that kit and with that extra lens, it really was a no brainer. And for me, that's what it's all about now. Um, gear for me has to tick multiple boxes for YouTube, for professional work and personal work too. And even for my graphic design work as well. Everything has to serve a purpose. I don't want to have any gear shelving, not doing anything. And I can honestly say 
every piece of photography equipment I've got, every camera and every lens I use every single day. And I never want that to change anymore. I used to have things shelled for ages, collecting dust. No, that's not me anymore. Everything has to serve a purpose. These are tools that need to be used, okay? Um, and as I said too, uh, before, the budget is really, really good. At just over $1,000, that keeps me clear to maybe look at getting an S5 later in 2023 because I want to bring that full frame system into my um, micro four thirds workflow and ecosystem as well. Sticking with Panasonic, sticking with that Panasonic workflow, that's what it's all about. And, and one more thing um, while I'm talking about workflow, workflow is a real big thing to me. If there is anything that's hindering your workflow, you want to try to eliminate it straight away. So for me, things that were hindering all aspects, YouTube, professional, personal, was stripping down the gear all the time for everything I needed to do. So workflow is super important. Important um, Workflow for me, you know, I'm not shooting as much street photography as I used to because I don't have the smaller camera anymore, the lighter camera and stuff like that. I'm not taking my camera everywhere with me anymore because for the family sort of stuff as well because I don't have that smaller camera. These G9, the GH5, they're bigger cameras paired up with the Leica lenses. That's hindering my workflow in that realm as well, right? So having something that's smaller and lighter that I can just grab and take with me is super important and I can't stress this enough. Workflow is absolutely everything. You have to be in a Zen flow for your workflow, no hindrances. It all comes back to that proverb, that Japanese proverb, Kaizen, small steps of improvement at all times. And that's what I try to strive for with my photography gear, my photo work, YouTube, everything in life pretty much. If I can make it a little bit better and take one less step away, that's great. And if I can take one less step away and it ticks multiple boxes, even better. Um, so yeah, there's a little bit of wisdom at the end there for you. Um, if you like this sort of stuff, please consider conscribing, conscribing, subscribing to the channel. Give this video a big thumbs up and let me know your questions and queries below. I love hearing the feedback. It's fantastic. This little community that we're growing together is brilliant. I'm very, very um, grateful for you all. Uh, it means a lot to me every time you comment and give the video a like. So um, appreciate it. And yeah, I'll see you all next time. Bye.